Now's your chance to go one-on-one -on -one with me. I'm Randy Couture, so watch my videos and catch a clue. You might win a trip for a personal training session with me. If you take the striking out of these events, then you have a grappling competition. And today in this segment, I want to talk about grappling takedowns. I'm going to use Nathan here as my assistant. We're going to cover some tie-ups, some hand control, and some different setups, and then a few different takedown situations for grappling events. Now the first thing you're going to realize when you're dealing with a grappling event is the st your stance is going to change. I no longer have to worry and protect my head so much and worry about being kicked or punched. What I have to do is protect my hips to be, keep from being taken down. So I'm, that's going to cause me to take more of a traditional wrestling stance and, and move, move and operate from this position. From this traditional wrestling stance, I'm going to use a couple lines of defense. The first one is my hands. I'm going to use my hands to keep Nathan away from me. My elbows, if Nathan gets through my hands. And the last one is my head. I want to try and keep my head a little bit lower than my opponent's head. We use several different tie-up situations. <clears throat> That's where, in order to move Nathan and break down those lines of defense so that I can attack his hips and take him down, I've got to use my hands and move my feet to create motion and create those opportunities to penetrate and take Nathan down to the mat. One common tie-up is just the double bicep tie-up. I'm grabbing both of Nathan's biceps, and now from here, I can steer him and make him step and manipulate him so that I can penetrate and take him down. The bicep tie-ups are very effective. Another common one is the elbow tie-ups. I move into my opponent and he wants to put hands on me to keep me away from him, which is a way that I like to approach a lot of takedown situations, is moving into his comfort zone so that he wants to put hands on me to keep me off of him and keep me away from him. He's giving me those elbows that I can grab, and I don't want to just hang on to him. I want to pull him in so that I have control of him. So if I use light hands and just put him up here, he's still got bicep tie-ups, and now he can steer me and manipulate me. So when I grab those elbows, I want to make sure that I pull him in and take control of my opponent. Now I can move him around and steer him and create those little opportunities to change levels and penetrate. A couple other common tie-ups is the uh, what we call, some people call a Russian tie-up. I like to call a two-on-one. A lot of times your opponent in a grappling situation will grab a hold of you. And he's giving me, in this instance, a chance for me to take his arm and grab two of my hands on one of his hands here in a two-on-one. And from this two-on-one position, again, I can cause him to step, circle, and control, and move him around. I want to make that arm part of my body. I'm going to put his elbow in the center line of my body. I want to lock it out, shoulder pressure down on the top of his shoulder so that I can hold him here and move him around. I can foot sweep, do a lot of different takedowns from, from this two-on-one position. The harder he tries to get his arm back, the more opportunity I'm going to have to change levels and penetrate. Another nice tie-up from this situation for grappling and grappling takedowns is the underhook. Okay, a single underhook. Again, I've effectively broken down those lines of defense. Nathan's hand and elbow are out of the way now. I've got free access to penetrate to his hips right here. My head and head position becomes very important in this underhook situation. If I give Nathan head position, even though I have a good control point in the underhook, I still have to get through his cranium to get to his hips. 
So I need to make sure that I have good head position. Now I can move him around with that underhook and attack his hips, attack his legs. Okay. So those are four basic tie-up positions there. Bicep ties, elbow ties, the two on one, okay, and the underhook. From the biceps and the elbows, maybe it's going to be a combination of the two. It may not be just both biceps or both elbows. Maybe it's going to be a bicep on one side and an elbow on the other side, or vice versa. I can use that to steer him around and again break down those lines of defense, his hands, his elbows, and getting past his head so that I can penetrate to his body. A common tactic and drill that we use is to hand fight, what we call hand fighting in wrestling. Okay, when we're both in our stance, we're both moving here and we're just controlling wrists, moving, working for those tie-ups. See if I can get control of my opponent, make him step, and create openings so that I can attack or penetrate. And you can just go around minute rounds or two minute rounds back and forth and just hand fight and work on those little manipulations and tie-ups back and forth. Both opponents going live so that it's realistic and you get a, an idea what it takes to move your opponent to control them. It's very important if I'm gonna put my hands on them but I need to move my feet. If I put my hands on him and just stand here in front of him, nothing's going to happen. He's not forced to react to me. But if I grab a hold of him and I create motion by moving my feet, he's got to step, he's got to move, and that's going to create opportunities for me to penetrate. Okay, those are the basic tie-ups and things that you're going to use to manipulate your opponent and create opportunities to take him down. Once you learn to use your hands and move your feet to create motion and create those opportunities, you need to find some setups, create little manipulations where you can predict where your opponent's going to go, how he's going to react to certain hand fights in certain positions. One setup that I like to use a lot is passing an elbow. And all I'm looking for in a setup is, is that split second opportunity that I can penetrate, get past those lines of defense, his hand, his elbow, and his head, and get to his body, to his hips. And passing an elbow, it works real well from the bicep tie because you get into this little dance where I go to a bicep tie and then your opponent rotates inside and wants to bicep tie himself. And you, so you get into this mode here where you're both hand fighting for that bicep tie, that inside control. You always want to have nice inside control. Now as I rotate to the bicep and I feel him release and ro start to rotate his hand around, I'm going to use that opportunity. I know he's going to do that. I can predict that. So as he releases and goes to rotate around, I'm just putting pressure on his elbow and passing it across in front of his body. Notice as I pass that elbow and take advantage of that little opportunity where those lines of defense are out of position so I can penetrate to his body, I start my level change for my penetration so that I can shoot off of that little setup. So the elbow pass is a pretty effective way to set your opponent up, create that opportunity to penetrate and take him down. Another common setup that I like to use is an arm drag. Okay, and I can set up an arm drag in several different fashions. A, a, just a standard arm drag drill is any time my opponent puts his hand on my body, I want to drag that across. Okay, I'm just patting that hand down catching it above the elbow and pulling it across. And there again is that split second opportunity for me to change levels and penetrate to his body. Okay. So just a simple drill to get the hang of the arm drag is just here, 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 here. As you start to get more comfortable with that motion of dragging your opponent's arm, you want to start to add the level change and the penetration to that. So he puts it up, I drag it across and penetrate. Now 
Now when you go home next Christmas and your grandma puts her hand on you, you arm drag her and you throw her down. Works real well. The idea is that you do it enough so that it becomes second nature. Every time someone puts their hand up there, you're anticipating that, you're seeing that, and you're creating that arm drag and that opportunity to penetrate. Okay, we talked a little bit about the two-on-one as a good tie-up, a good way to set up that two-on-one and use that two-on-one. Again, it's to force your opponent to call or tie or put his hands on you. As soon as I move into his comfort zone, keeping my lines of defense in position, and he puts those hands on me, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm gonna cross, reach across. I'm gonna rotate my shoulder, move my feet, and pull that arm across. And that baseball grip on the wrist, elbow to the center line of the body. And now this, in this position is my setup. Whether I circle one way and make him step with a single, or I make him circle the other way and put some pressure on him so he steps there. Just depends on what technique I'm trying to set up. So being able to, every time he puts his hand up there, pull that two on one in, I'm again, eliminating those lines of defense for that split second, establishing some control so that I can create that opportunity to penetrate. A real common way, and another setup that we like to use is that underhook. And there's several different ways to get into that underhook position. I can either be aggressive or I'm pounding the head and, and you're taking a risk and reaching for your opponent and putting your hands on your opponent. But if you have a goal in mind and you're trying to achieve a good, good uh, tie-up position, then you're probably going to be all right. So I'm coming to the head. For some reason, your head and arms obviously are connected. So you put some pressure on that head, create some space under that armpit for that underhook. So I clobber him, and there's my underhook. Okay. Once I establish that good underhook position, and that control point, now I can start to move him. Again, creating that motion, eliminating those lines of defense for that opportunity to penetrate and take my partner down. Okay. Another common thing that will happen is, again, moving into your opponent so he puts his hands on you. Okay. Again, a little more passive approach. I want to move into him so he puts hands on me. And now I'm just going to bump this out of the way with my cross hand. As I bump it out of the way, I'm digging for that underhook position, okay? And again, from here, I'm looking for that setup where I'm making him move his feet and react to me. And those are the basic setups that you're gonna use to create opportunities to take your opponent down. And we're gonna demonstrate that elbow pass a few times in a more of a live situation, again, like the hand fighting that we did earlier in this segment. Another nice setup is just to simply snap your opponent's head. Basically, I'm just going to club him with a forearm, make him move, make him blink, and, and give him some pressure on his head. So if we're in our stance, I might club him on the head, get him to respond. His head bobs, he, re he recovers, and that's going to create that opportunity for me to penetrate off of that head snap. It's a pretty simple thing, just clubbing him in the head, using that forearm. I want to make sure when I reach for my opponents that I'm not reaching with that lead leg, the hand that's guarding that lead leg. It's not going to take him very long to realize that he's pretty close to that leg. And if I'm reaching my hands up here, he'll be able to attack that leg pretty simply. So if I'm going to put my hands on my opponent, I'm going to do it with that hand that guards my trail leg, the leg that's furthest away from my opponent. That's important when you're working on the head snap or any other technique or setup where you're reaching and trying to put your hands on your opponent. So I want to keep that guard hand in position. If he reaches for that leg that's closest to him, I can fend that attack off. I've got my arm, elbow, and hand in between my hips or my body and my opponent. I'm going to mess with him. If I'm going to set him up and use my hands, I'm going to do it 
first with that trail leg hand. Here. I switch my grip or my stance and I can switch hands. Once I get that hand on him, and I've got elbow in position keeping him out, now I can bring that other hand up and use it as well to create the situation I need for a setup for penetration. And the first and simplest takedown that I want to cover is just the straight double leg. It's the most common. It's the first takedown you would teach a little kid if you're teaching him how to wrestle. Again, it, it involves some basic techniques or basic skills that you need to know for any takedown. The first basic skill is gonna be a level change. Okay, and go from a head-to-head -head position. I wanna bend my knees, keep my head up, lower my hips, and, let, and change levels with my hips by bending those knees. Here. Now I'm in line to attack parallel to the mat through my opponent. A common mistake is to not change levels and penetrate at an angle to the mat so that at some point back there as my opponent moves back and tries to counter my takedown I run into the mat and that's as far as I continue to penetrate or if I change levels and move in a parallel fashion to the mat I can go as far as I need to go to run through my opponent and take him down so it's very important that you get this level change down so that you can move your hips parallel to the mat and drive through your opponent. Now it doesn't matter, I can use a lot of different setups and a lot of different tie-ups to execute a double leg. So you gotta figure out as you use your hands and move your feet to create those opportunities to take your opponent down, which ones are gonna work best for you, for your style, your body type, your speed, your flexibility, your strength, all those things play into what kind of grappler, what kind of wrestler you are. So once you have that level change down, the next thing you need to learn is penetration, how to cover the space between my hips and his hips as I attack his body. And the hard part about that is I want to change levels first and now from here I want to cover that distance. Obviously, if I'm outside an arm's length, I'm giving him a lot of time to react, a lot of time to counter my takedown. So I want to make sure that I'm not clear back here outside of an arm's length if I'm going to try and penetrate and cover that distance. The more time I give him to react with his hips and sprawl and stop me from taking him down, the less my chances are that I'm going to finish that takedown. So I at least want to be within an arm's length. If I'm going to change levels and then penetrate. What I'm doing is what's called a rock over step. I'm rocking over my heel toe to my knee. Okay, here. I bring that trail foot up. Okay, if we change sides here, and I penetrate, level change, penetrate, that trail foot comes up. I don't want to leave it back there. I don't have a very good base here. Here I've got a nice foundation. Doesn't matter if Nathan moves away. I'm still here holding my own weight. I'm still here in a good foundation and in position. Okay, I penetrate. I want to make sure as I wrap my hands, I'm going to wrap them low on his calves. I don't want to be on his thighs. I don't want to be on his fruit of the looms. I want to be down on his calves. If you're going to bend, bend or control a tree limb, you don't do it in by the trunk where it's strongest. You do it out on the end of the limb where it's easier to control, easier to bend. Same thing is true here when I'm trying to take him down. Okay, so level change, penetration, bring that trail leg up. Okay, and now very important, especially if I'm grappling and I want to avoid Nathan's guard. I don't want to just drive him straight back to his butt. If I drive him straight back to his butt, I come out right in his guard. And now from his guard, obviously I have to figure out a way to pass. And depending on who you're grappling against, that can be pretty difficult. So, once I level change, penetrate, trail leg comes up, it comes up for another reason. I need to drive off of this foot and turn the corner. Again, I want to take advantage of the fact that humans on two legs don't move very good laterally. Okay? If I drive him straight back, I end up in the guard. If I drive across his body, 
driving off this trail foot, I have a pretty good chance of avoiding his guard and taking him down. So from here again, wrapping to the calves, I'm going to swisher this inside foot. I want to put my hips in line to go that direction, across his body. If I stay here, my hips are in line to go straight ahead. It's going to be hard to go this direction and turn the corner. Okay, so I swisher that foot, drive off that outside foot, and now my hips are in line to go across his body. Exaggerate your head. I want to use my head to steer him to the mat. It's like an extra appendage, an extra arm, if you will. I'm using that head, looking the way I'm going, and steering him to the mat. Okay, so again, level change. Penetration, trail legs up, swisher the inside foot, driving across his body, turning the corner. Okay. Now as I turn that corner, level change, penetration, trail leg comes up, inside knee pivots. I'm going to drive across his body. As I drive across and steer him to the mat with, the, with my head, this inside arm needs to straighten and put pressure on that leg. And that's going to allow me to pass this guard and stay out of his legs from here. Now I can work up his body and achieve a good cross side position. And that's very important. I've eliminated the need to fiddle around and be caught in his guard, be in the risk of him submitting me, crawling up my back, looking for a triangle or an arm bar. So again, as I drive across, I'm planting my shoulder right in his stomach, trying to pin his hips down. I want to make it hard for him to shrimp, hard for him to create space to get this bottom leg through and around my waist. So I'm putting all my weight on his body. This arm that was across his leg is straightening out so that he can't bring that leg in and again, shrimp and get it around my waist. All right, here. And now I can bring this top leg in and work up to a good cross side position. Anytime I can take my opponent down and eliminate the need for passing his guard, I'm one step ahead of the game. I'm in a much better position than I am having to pass his guard and worry about his opportunities to be offensive. So again, figure out what setup you're gonna use. Whether it's gonna be an elbow, bicep, or what. Make him step, move him. Level change, penetration. Pivot, drive. Okay, nice double leg, turning the corner, driving across my opponent. One thing I like to try and add to that sometimes is what we call in wrestling an ankle lace. Okay, as I take him down, let's turn this way. As I take him down here, right here, his, his legs generally will, will sit against the mat. He's trying to shrimp and create space to pull guard. What I notice as he does that is I can weave one arm over and under and trap his foot. Okay, and trapping his foot and lace his ankles and keep pressure on this bottom thigh. So from here, I can start to work up, isolate this ankle. And then there's a, a submission here if you get lucky enough to catch somebody. Just putting my knee in his stomach, working up. I can go to his toe, crank his ankle, or I can sit back, okay, and crank his shin into his calf here, trapping his hips. So, as you take your opponent down in that double leg, look for that ankle lace. A lot of times it's there. It's something you can pick up pretty easily. Do some double legs here. A little more real time, kind of give you an idea what double legs look like in, in real time at real speed. So 
So, it's the double leg takedown to the ankle lace. Turn in that corner, good level change, good penetration. Now, after you've mastered the double leg, rather than attack my opponent's whole body and attacking both legs at the same time, sometimes it's a lot easier to split him in half. What we do say is, is get half man and attack half of his body and then change off to the rest of his body. And what we call a high crotch. And a high crotch is a very nice takedown. And a lot of times you master this takedown, you can whisper it in your partner's ear and tell him you're going to hit a high crotch. And it's still that hard to stop if you do it right. So what I want to do is, again, using the setups that we've talked about, using your hands, moving your feet, I like to execute my high crotch off of an elbow tie or passing the elbow. But from that elbow tie, I want to circle so that I create this half man situation. Instead of being head up, square to his hips and penetrating to a double leg, I'm shuffling my feet so that I'm half man. I'm going to attack one of his legs or half of his body instead of his whole body. The basic penetration is pretty close to the same. I still need that good level change. Okay, I still need to rotate to that knee and that rock over step. I want to bring that knee down right by his foot the leg that I'm attacking, right here. Instead of wrapping and attacking both legs, I'm coming through his legs or in his crotch and wrapping to his calf on one leg. That trail foot still has to come up. Okay, so I'm here, level change, penetration. I want my head up, my shoulder in here, okay? As I penetrate, my head is up. I don't want my head down here. This is in good position. I can't carry much weight here because he's definitely going to sprawl and give me some resistance. I need to be up, good foundation. My power, my hips, as close to his leg as I can keep it because he's going to try and take this leg away from me and sprawl. I've got to be able to hang on to it and stay in position here. Again, good foundation. He moves away. I'm still carrying my own weight. I'm not leaning on him. I'm not out of position. Okay, here, nice and tight. Good position right here. Trail foot, foot is up. I still need that drive foot because I still need to turn the corner with a high crotch. Now, as, I'm, as I penetrate here and I secure this leg, I want to turn that corner, drive my nice cauliflower ears into Nathan's ribs, drive across his hips, and put all of his weight on that free leg. Make him hop here. As I drive back up into him and make him stand on that free leg, now I'm going to change my grip on this leg here to here. Changing from the high crotch to the double. I'm going to continue to drive across, turning that corner and driving through him. As I reach for that double leg again, I want to emphasize straightening this leg out so I can avoid that guard here. Again, I can look for the ankle lace if it's there, but more importantly is the position. I want to keep my shoulder in his stomach, keep his hips pinned to the mat, and work my legs up a good cross side position. Okay. High crotch. Off the elbow tie, half man, level change, penetration here. Driving, again, swisher pivot on that inside knee. Now a lot of times, a good drill from here is I'm just going to have Nathan turn. I've already started in this position right here with my hips in, the position I should be in. And the drill is to work on keeping this position as my opponent moves and adjusts and tries to take this leg away from me. So Nathan starts to turn and try and take that leg away. Okay, I pivot, 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 turn, and stay in position so that I can bear his weight and finish that takedown. That's a very crucial point. I've done all the work, I moved him, I broke down his lines of defense, 
and I penetrated all the way in here, the hard part's done. Now I need to stay in position, drive through and finish this takedown, score those points, take this guy down, okay? You don't want to get this far and then allow this guy to take you out of position and take your takedown or your opportunity away from you. So this is a very good drill. Get in here, have him spin, go ahead. As he spins, keep position, keep position, and then finish your takedown. Turn that corner, drive across to that double leg. And a high crotch, again, like I said, is a great takedown because I'm only attacking half of his power instead of all of his power. I can use a lot of different setups and manipulations to set up that high crotch. I can do it from the bicep, I can do it from the elbow pass, Okay, I can even do it from the two-on-one. I can do it from the underhook, where I'm moving him, using that underhook to swing under to that high crotch, driving across. Okay, so again, it's a good takedown. You can use a lot of different setups to achieve this takedown. What it will look like in real time is sort of like this. you've learned the high crotch or what some people call a head outside single leg we transition now to the other side of the body because these two moves work in concert you go to the low single or the head inside single leg and again several different positions that I can execute this technique from or this takedown several different setups the easiest and the one I like the best is operating off of that elbow tie by using that elbow tie and a bicep tie on the other side I can circle away from the leg I want to attack. If I circle towards that leg, it's moving away from me. It's much harder for me to close that distance and get to that leg. If I circle away from it, now it's coming towards me. I plant that back foot to drive and penetrate, level change and penetrate. That leg is coming towards me. I close that distance to that leg a lot quicker. Okay, so use your tie-ups, move your feet to create those opportunities to penetrate. Now this penetration, the level change is exactly the same. Still want to bend my knees and get down here with my hips so that I can penetrate to that leg. But the penetration step itself is a, is a little bit different. Rather than split his body and attack here like we did for the high crotch or the double, I'm penetrating to the outside. My knee is gonna come down right on the outside of his foot. Now I wanna be careful. A common mistake is to wanna sweep around the corner here. And the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So even though I'm moving him in a circle, I want to make sure when I penetrate, that I penetrate in a straight line to that leg. Okay, it's very important. If I start sweeping around that leg, I'm giving him an opportunity to react and take that leg away from me and put myself out of position. So I want to shoot straight to that leg. Circle away from it, level change, penetrate. As I penetrate and that knee comes down, I want to bring this hand around the back of his knee. I want to stay below his knee. If I'm at his knee, when he sprawls, he can extend me and get me in trouble. If I stay below his knee on his calf or lower ankle, now your knee is a weak link. It's a one-dimensional joint in that it only moves forwards and backwards like this. If I put pressure on it laterally, it's connected to his hip. It keeps him from being able to turn his hip and cover my head and again get me in that extended and, and troubled position. Being here, I don't have much power. It's hard for me to finish. So I want to eliminate his ability to drop his hips 
and bring them down on the top of my head and sprawl. And I do that if I want to wrap my hand staying below his knee, down on his lower ankle. Okay, it's a, an important key. Again, level change, penetration, and now I'm going to throw this hand around. Imagine I'm punching a punching bag here from the back. And that's going to cause me to pivot on this knee. My head is going to stay inside of his thigh or knee. I don't want my head back here. Okay, I want to have good shoulder pressure laterally on that knee here. Okay, I'm pivoting to this angle. His power is in the front. His power is his hips. I stay out here in front. He's going to sprawl and I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. If I pivot, sprawl again, if I pivot and get this angle, it's much harder for him to put that power on my head and shoulders and get me extended. Okay. Much greater success, much greater opportunity to finish that single leg and come out on top. Again, elbow tie, bicep tie, I can steer, steer, make him step. Okay, circle away from the leg, I want to attack. Level change, penetration, here. The angle across the body, the hand wraps below the knee in this position right here. Now I can apply pressure to that. Okay, and force him to the mat. Probably not gonna go all the way to his stomach probably some other things that he'll do that we'll cover. More often than not, as I shoot, he's going to respond by sprawling, trying to take that leg away from me. Okay, so I'm here, I penetrate, he sprawls, and he takes that leg away from me. I've pivoted, All right, I'm here. Got that hand down by that ankle, not at the knee, because if I go to the knee, he can take that foot away, and see how the hips come over my head. If I stay at the ankle, now his knee won't let him rotate his hips over my head. All right, he tries to rotate his hips over my head and sprawl, his knee won't go. It won't allow it, all right? I'm just gonna continue to circle towards that ankle. He can come to his knees, he's probably gonna, more than likely, what a jujitsu guy will do is circle the other way and bring that leg over the top to try and pull guard. What I want to do as soon as I get here, go to both knees, Nate. As soon as I get here, is I want to change hands on this foot. If I stay here, he's going to try and spin the other way and take this, or the other way. He's going to try and spin the other way and take this leg away from me. There, what some guys will do is this. They'll spin out. Okay, I want to be aware of the options that my opponent has from every situation. So when he's got that single leg, if he changes hands, takes that hand to my foot, that frees up that initial penetration hand. But now if I spin out, I'm actually putting him right in behind me, which is not where I want to be in that situation. So it's important. As I penetrate, as soon as I'm here, I'm changing hands on that ankle. And okay, now I can drive across, capture both legs, and work my way up into good position. Okay, so if you sprawl and go to both knees. Here. Okay, even if I penetrate here, he goes to his knees and he kicks that leg over the top to pull guard. Boom. As, I, as I change hands on that ankle, I'm looking to pass that leg and attack again to cross side. Worst case scenario, I end up in his guard. Okay, so I have to pass his guard. That's okay. I've still taken him to the mat, I've still taken him down, scored those points in a grappling situation. So you see the single leg creates several different scenarios and several different options for you, but it's a really, really good takedown. 
Again, level change penetration. Get that angle through his body. thing about the single leg and the high crotch is that the two moves work in concert together. As I establish a good tie up or a good position, if I move this way and that foot doesn't come forward, it's not there for my single leg, my high crotch is right there on the other side. So the two moves, one or the other, is usually always going to be there on one side or the other from the same stance. If I change my stance and my single leg becomes here and my high crotch is over there. Again, I have to adjust to what leg my opponent leads versus which leg that I'd like to lead in a grappling situation and, and decide which takedowns are going to work best for me against that opponent. Now if I combine the two moves, the single leg and the high crotch, I come up with a knee tap and it's a real effective move, kind of a slick move, looks kind of neat when you touch a guy's knee, you pop out on the other side and the guy falls on his face. Okay. And again, if you have a good single leg and a good high crotch, this will be a pretty easy technique for you to, to pick up. Basically what I'm doing is, I'm touching like I'm going to execute a single leg. And I'm only doing this as a setup in that I want him to react with his hips and start to sprawl. So as I move him and I touch that single leg and he starts to sprawl, now I'm going to finish with penetration just like I would on a high crotch and I come out right behind my opponent. Really slick move, takes some timing. If you get that timing down, you look pretty dang fantastic when you hit that technique. So again, touch to the single. I'm tapping that knee as he reacts and takes that leg away from me so I can't single leg him. I'm popping my head out that other side and that high crotch penetration. And then from here, I'm simply pivoting around the corner and I want to take this knee with me as I pivot around the Your level change and your penetration, even though in this technique it's kind of a combination of two penetrations, are pretty much basically the same. I'm starting with that single leg penetration and then I'm rotating to that high crotch penetration. And that combination makes it pretty difficult for your opponent to read what you're going to do. So again, you want to manipulate them, you want to move your feet, touch. Touch that knee, come out on the opposite side. Pretty fancy technique, but if you get the timing down, it's real nice, it works a lot. So now you should be a master at takedowns, using your hands, moving your feet, using those tie-ups, and executing that double leg, that high crotch, that single leg, or tapping that knee and popping out the back side. And all of these takedowns are adaptable to the fight scene too, when you add the striking back into the equation. But they're great to learn when you eliminate that striking portion. You don't have to be worried about being punched in the face and you can concentrate on the takedown technique.